Okay, so let's talk about hinging using uh, Gorilla Glue. Uh, the reason why I'm going to use Gorilla Glue on this, um, one, I'm using Robart hinges, and I'm not great with Robart hinges. This is just something I know. And so when I create my hinge line, um, as I'm drilling out my holes, I, I tend to have one that deviates a little bit or I'll have a little bit wider gap. Um, I don't know. It's just bad luck for me, I guess. So Gorilla Glue will help fill that gap and it's a, a very helpful tool. The other thing is um, I have drilled everything out, put new hard points in, and I've also filled some gaps and stuff. So I want to make sure that all of those gaps are filled. Um, Gorilla Glue is a pain in the butt. Uh, it's, it's filthy. Um, it foams all over the place. Uh, I, I want to make sure that you understand. Um, so Gorilla Glue, the, the clear Gorilla Glue that says no foam, on that label, it says for non-porous surfaces. That means uh, metal and uh, plastic and those kind of things. It's, it's not really made to bond into wood and, and other porous surfaces. So something to think about. Um, it may be just as strong. I don't know. The directions say non-porous surfaces. I'm going to follow that. All right. So what are some of the tools that we're going to need here? An X-Acto knife, just in case. Um, a nice little uh, acid brush that I'm going to use for the Vaseline. I got acetone, the Gorilla Glue, water, uh, containers, isopropyl or denatured alcohol. My isopropyl is actually denatured. It's just a container I have. And then uh, Vaseline and then um, nitrile gloves. And I use my drill, I'll explain how that works in a little bit. Looking at my hinge line, there's a couple of things here. One, this rudder is upside down. The reason why I have this plane upside down is my counterbalance is here. Okay, now if I flip my plane over, now, if you see here, the counterbalance hits. Okay, by flipping the plane over, what it does is it puts that gap and it allows that resting pressure to pull the counterbalance away. So once everything cures, I'm going to have a nice gap. Otherwise, I got to put something in here to prevent that gap. And I don't want to do that because as the hinges are, as the glue is starting to set, um, I'm constantly moving it. So by having it this way, it rubs. By having it inverted, it doesn't. So now that it's flipped over again, you can see there's no rub whatsoever. A couple of steps that I did. You can see here I went through and I have put uh, tape down all of the, the leaving and trailing edges of the hinge line. I can just wipe it down and then I can come back, tear off the tape, and then I just got to clean up the, the tape residue that's on the plane. Another thing to note, you can see the trim goes to here and I haven't got the trim here. If for some reason my rudder were to shift down or shift up, whatever, my trim line would be off more down here because there's two lines there, it would be a little more noticeable. So by putting my rudder in, then adding the trim afterwards, it just cleans up that trim line and, and it stays aligned the way that I want it. It's not going to be hard to take an iron and put it in there on the hinge line because the hinge lines here are huge, okay? On a smaller plane, it may be a little bit more difficult, but you also don't have as many hinges that you have to worry about. So, going into this, we're going to trim or we're going to hinge one side at a time, okay? We're not going to hinge this side and this side at the same time. There's a couple of reasons for that, okay? The glue itself is going to start seeping out from the area that I hinge, okay? So I've got to go through and I've got to keep that clean. The other thing is I'm going to be constantly moving the rudder to make sure that it's always free and it's always clean, okay? If I'm hinging both sides and it's pushing the hinge out here and it's pushing the hinge out here, 
what I may end up getting is something like this, where there's a gap in that hinge line, and then you can see it's binding and it's not right, and the rudder isn't going to move pure. Okay, so what do we do now? I'm going to pull everything off. I'm going to go through and I'm going to cover each of the hinges with Vaseline. Um, I saw on uh, one of the other sites that a guy used um, uh, chapstick. And I thought that was a brilliant idea. I think chapstick is really cool. It was simple for him to use. The only reason why I'm not going to use chapstick on this right now, um, I think I'm going to try that. He did it with epoxy. I'm not sure if it would work with the uh, Gorilla Glue or not. And I would rather do a test than do it on my plane and find out it didn't work quite right. The other reason why Gorilla Glue makes really good sense uh, with these hinges is because of the volume of them. There, there are so many hinges that I have to do that if I'm using epoxy, even 30 minute epoxy, if it's stirred with a, here's a neat tip. So I found that if I use a 440 rod and I stir my 30 minute epoxy, um, the epoxy will heat up faster and it'll cure faster than the 30 minutes. If I stir it with a wooden stick, it doesn't. So it does create some kind of a chemical reaction there. Um, I found this out because I've messed up hinge lines by stirring it with a metal rod. So something to think about. Start prepping the hinges. I'm just going to fill my brush up, lay them down, roll them and fill them. The most important part is to make sure that that hinge point is completely filled. Okay, be generous with the Vaseline because if that hinge gets glue in it, it can create a problem. There's nothing worse than a hinge that binds. Okay, so now I've got all of these hinges done. Some videos people will say that you need to sand these hinges in order for um, epoxy to adhere. You need to have the scrape lines. This is what I've found when I've torn apart planes. I, I don't see any difference when it comes to Gorilla Glue whether they're sanded or not. The barbs tend to be plenty for the Gorilla Glue to adhere to and hold it in. When it comes to epoxy, I do see a difference. The epoxy doesn't seem to adhere to the plastic nearly as well. So um, with the Gorilla Glue, I guess that's one perk that you get with it. It's, it's consolation for putting up with the mess, I would assume. And we're gonna go down stabilizer hinge line first, and then we'll do the rudder second. First thing I'm gonna do, I'm just going to spray in quite a bit of water in there, which means it's going to foam relatively quickly. Here's a trick. So put on your first set of rubber gloves and then add at least one more pair. If I'm working with epoxy, sometimes I use two pair or three pair. The reason why I use two pair is in the event that I am working and I touch any of the adhesive with my glove, I can tear the glove off, throw it in the garbage can, and keep working with gloves on. I don't have to actually stop. And then that way I'm not getting the glue on my plane. So I'm gonna take my Gorilla Glue, and I'm gonna liberally fill up the cup. Way more than I would ever use. I have an aluminum um, tube that I just have cut for my drill. Now I can just take it, Put it in there. This doesn't widen. The hole at all. What it does is it just coats it with the Gorilla Glue. I've used a uh, cotton swab to do it. Um, just seems to take a lot longer. So now with paper towel, I'm just gonna quickly 
throw some alcohol on it, clean up that hinge line so that any splash, any residue, any, anything that way is gone from the Gorilla Glue on the outside. Just put maybe the first barb or, or two worth of glue, clean it off really good, and then you can just drop them in. I'm going in most of the way, um, two thirds of the way or whatever. And then I'm going to go through and clean it up again before I push them all the way in. I cannot stress that this is way more than enough glue in these hinge points. It doesn't require nearly this much, but I want to make sure that everything is filled in all the way in the back and all the areas that I might not have sealed up. Now each of the hinges I roll when they go in. I do have um, Vaseline on this glove from holding the hinge point. I'm going to show you something here really quick. You can see these are already starting to foam. So using my alcohol, I'm going to clean up real good around that point. And I'm going to drop my hinge in. If all of these are at a 90 degree, I can just slide my rotor in. And I'm just going to start watching these. Anywhere there's foam, just going to clean it up. All right. So I'm going to continue to rotate these and check them over the next little while, making sure that everything's wiped down, that none of the Gorilla Glue is protruding, and that the hinges all remain in a nice, good, straight line. We'll have a nice, clean moving rudder that works really, really nicely. Okay, so it's been 15 minutes since I did the Gorilla Glue. Now I haven't wiped these hinges down in a good portion, uh, you know, for probably five minutes or so. And you can see there's just a little tiny bit of foam seeping out now. But overall, every one of these hinges are clean. By using the, the spray and the drill, it just seems like they work really fast. Um, the glue sets up fast and it starts foaming right away. And things lock out really quickly. Uh, works out pretty good. Uh, the hinges aren't moving out. Everything is pretty solid. I'll be able to do the other side in half hour or so. So here we are 45 minutes after I started them. The last time I wiped them down was probably a half hour or more ago and there's absolutely no foam coming out. They're clean. The rudder itself is moving very free. Everything's staying aligned and we're good to go. Such an easy way to do Gorilla Glue. Um, Overall, I, I avoided using Gorilla Glue for a long time because it's so messy. Doing it this way just seems to help. I'll get the other side done and the hinge line will be done in less than two hours. I think it's a great way to go. Doing the other side. Really, the only difference with this side versus this side is I won't dip these into the Gorilla Glue. Again, it's not necessary because I'm already coating them, but what I will do is just take a brush and just put just a small amount on the end. The most important step here, in my opinion, is I need to go back through and put Vaseline on all of these hinge points again because I have spent all this time, you know, wiping it down, cleaning it up with alcohol, so I want to make sure that I don't bind from the other side. Other than that, it's a, a pretty simple process, and so it's just a repeat of the other uh, the, the first side, and then keep things moving, wipe them down, and you'll have a rudder that's done. Okay, now I've got both sides glued, and the glue is starting to set up, so all I'm doing is just wiping things down and moving my hinges. I want to make sure that I'm bevel to bevel, always clean and easy without any... Um, 
binding any issues that way. So I'll continually watch my hinge line for consistency so that it's not wide on one side and the gap is small on the other. And I'll just keep wiping it down and watching it. Once it's completely dry, then I'll go ahead and strip the tape off of it and it will be done, ready to go.